Hello everyone, I'm Luke Neller and welcome to Best Few Plays of the Week. In this episode we have T20s on the Prowl, a crucial 1390, and a radio operator in terrible peril. Enjoy! This week's steel wall comes from the North American region and features the massive rolling bunker known as the KV-5. Sus the man joins the assault on Erlenburg and starts pushing forward on the eastern flank. The KV-5 takes on a number of enemies while the teammates in the west seem to be getting slaughtered. The defenders get up to six kills before Sus the man gets to open the tally for the attackers. The KV presses forward, ignoring the hail of shells pinging off its walls. Eventually, an enemy heavy gets close enough to do damage and Sus the man has to turn around and take it out. Forwards again, and now the incoming firestorm is starting to sting a little. An artillery strike blows off a track, followed by a second one as soon as the repairs are completed. Finally, some cover. With no shots coming in, Sus the Man is free to chip away at a retreating enemy until an allied SPG finishes it off. The KV Bunker may have thick walls, but a rather small weapon. Without APCR, the gun struggles to damage the T-32, but Sus the Man can still keep it trapped. The enemies are running out, but the last three are determined to take the KV-5 with them. Sus the Man proves too solid to destroy, however, taking down two of the three before the match ends in a double victory. 8k blocked, most damage dealt in the match, and even the radio operator survived. A great steel wall game all around. The following Confederate game comes from the Asian server and features a German variant of the Walker Bulldog. Mac Boys arrives on Live Oaks, finding a match where practically everyone is a tier 8. The black dog races ahead, setting into a well-known bush. It seems there's a rival scout on the other team with the exact same game plan. There can be only one though, and Matt Boys calls down an arty strike to get rid of the imposter. The bulldog keeps peeking over the edge, revealing the enemy and taking the occasional shot. When the tier 9 heavy tries to get rid of it, the little black bulldog shows just how hard it can bite. The game of peekaboo ends when the enemies come out to play. Then Mac Boys heads for the city. A super pershing tracked out in the open receives some attention along the way. The Diga may be bigger, but it proves to be no match for a bulldog. Mac Boys seems to be really fond of tracking shots. Well, little dogs tend to go for the ankles, of course. Ouch! Maybe not from the front. But more like this. Auf Wiedersehen! Here's the last enemy, and we know how the routine goes by now. Blow off the track, keep it tracked, and take it apart. Victory! Nice work, Confederate! That's a lot of damage with even more assist on top. We move back to the North American servers for a crucial contribution by Mazejar and their AMX 1390. The map is Maravanka, and it's a tier 10 battle. Mazejar begins by scouting the eastern flank, then relocates closer to the middle. Before long, the team is three tanks down and dug into one corner of the map. An enemy 121 appears on a scouting run and gets driven away by Mazejar. The object challenges Mason to a duel and very nearly comes out on top. Our crucial contributor is down to 400 hit points and three allies. Here's a chance to finish off the 1-2-1 and a single shot is all it takes. The rest of the clip should be enough for this highest three. Okay, maybe not if several of them bounce off. The T-62A lands a hit and the safety margin is gone. Maze Jar dodges several shots and dives into cover. The last ally SPG blows up the T-62, but follows it to the garage only moments later. Okay, four and one, but three of those are arty. That's not too bad. The IS-3 goes for the cap and is easily dealt with. It's just those SPGs now. How hard could that be? Here's the first one. Getting spotted would be bad, so Maze spends a lot of time setting up for the attack. Suddenly, the alarm goes off and the AMX has to race back to the base instead. 
The Capra is a gigantic GWE100. Maze Jar misses twice, connects and bounces the last shell from the heavy armor. Well, poop. Should have reloaded on the way. Maze spends some time dodging artillery shells, then finishes off the Kappa with three more shots. There's the next one! Maze misses a shot on the move and runs into the third arty by sheer luck. At least this one dies easily. There's three shells loaded. It should be plenty, right? Well, it would have been, but wasting the first one means that the SVG lives and there's just 40 seconds left on the clock. The opponent is almost dead, but so is the 1390, and ramming it is out of the question. The arty tries a shotgun attack, then it goes for the ram as Maze Jar is setting up the shot. The gun fires on 0, 0, 0 and the match is won with no time to spare. Whoa, that's definitely a crucial contribution, but maybe keep an eye on the clock next time. And now for some Top Gun mayhem from the EU region, as destroyer SCNR takes the Object 907 out on a rampage on Serene Coast. The Object 907 was rewarded to people who racked up fame points in the third and fourth Clan Wars campaigns, so we expect Destroyer to live up to the name. Despite this, the early game is cautious skirmishing without much destruction going on. Here we go, an AMX 5100 is caught with nowhere to run and becomes the first kill. Let the destruction begin! The next victim is a Bachata Leon 25 ton, and here we see some real aggression as the destroyer gives it no chance to escape. It's a good start for a killing spree, but the team has evaporated away and the match is two against eight. Destroyer regroups with the remaining ally and prepares to defend the home base. A T-49 charges in like a berserker, but misses its shot and dies without doing any damage. Destroyer turns around and deals with the RU-251 attempting a sneak attack from the rear. The enemies are coming from all directions, but this is at least quick to put down. The bad news is that the last ally is gone as well. The Skoda puts up a fight and the artillery does its worst. But it doesn't matter, the destroyer wrecks every machine at the home base and goes looking for the rest. Seriously, another one at the base? The IS-3 is badly outclassed and the fight doesn't last long. That leaves the arty and it looks like destroyer was paying attention to where the shells were coming from. The SVG is caught on the move without a chance to fight back. GG. Nice comeback. It took a while to get the kill streak going, but the results speak for themselves. As the episode finale, we have brothers in arms from the European server cluster. Arambas and Lurky head out to Moravanka in a pair of T20s to carry the game or die trying. The med tanks head for the Eastern Forest at high speed and engage in enemy force. A 5916 tries to help, but gets a little underfoot. Barambas picks off a Skoda, and the platoon tag team at Tiga with ruthless efficiency. The KV-5 is a tough nut to crack, but Barambas knows to go for the R2-D2 at the front. The Object 416, on the other hand, proves surprisingly easy to kill. Lurky goes to finish off the KV-5, but an ally gets the kill. No matter, as long as it's destroyed. The platoon focuses on long-range fire support for a moment, and another ally collides with Barambas. This camo pattern must be a little too good. The badly damaged IS-6 is picked off at range, while the last allied tank dies elsewhere on the map. It's just the two of them now, plus an SVG against seven enemies. It's time to even the score. Brambus kills a Yekpan Sophia, Loki takes out a Black Prince, and then saves Brambus from another Tiga Ai. Then, a Yekpanta is finished off with a shot from each. The Allied Arty was found and destroyed during the fighting, and there are still two Tier 8 heavies to kill. The Carnarvon makes the hunt easy by parking in the capture circle and gets brought down by long-distance gunnery. This seems like a good opportunity to take care of the enemy SPG. It's found at the enemy base and quickly taken out together. The last enemy is one hit from death. Lurky shot bounces off, so Brambus charges in and ends the match in style. 11 kills with middle tier med tanks, and you seem to be in control the whole time. Nice work, you two! Now those were really international replays. By the way, if you submit a Brothers in Arms or Armored Fist replay, 
try to link to the other replays in your platoon or section so that we can see from all the points of view. I'm Luke Nella, and see you next episode. Got a gun? I don't know what it is. Here we go. Her name is XPT100. It's hard for nowhere to run. Finally, some cover. With no shots coming in, thus the man is free to chip away at a retreating enemy. Slow down. Well, little dogs tend to go for the ankles, of course. Right.